All right, let's take a pause and look at some of the other boring settings that we need to know about. We are back to our basic simulation. Let's take a look at the output and settings. On the output side, we have this type, so we can check our data structure. This will show us our bounding box and our leaf nodes. That can be changed here under sparse. So if we want less levels, this will give us less levels. You can see now we are restricted a bit. Six is a good number to have. This will just allow, if you have fast moving volumes, to expand in the other areas. If you really want to go in depth with this, we have on our lovely website, you go under documentation and then you go under Axiom 3. Also shout out to join us on our Discord. So you go under Axiom 3, you will arrive here. You can go under settings and here everything is documented and how everything exactly works. I will just do an overview and show you more uh, in practical terms how things are working. All right. So we have our leaf nodes uh, levels. Uh, these are the defaults. Almost never you would have to change this. Uh, every now and then I have to change the just the velocity margin iterations or scale. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So we're here. Let's put this to eight by three. You will see we will get more boxes closely around our simulation. And if we put this to 32, the boxes are going to be bigger. And this is if you have highly detailed big explosions, you can put this to 32 in case 16 uh, is clamping your values. But in most cases, 16 will be fine. Then we have our activation fields. I will cover that in a second. Uh, remove inactive leaves. Just leave all of this on. Um, should be on by default. You don't have to touch any of it. Uh, the only other thing you might need to touch is the value threshold. That's pretty much saying if the density value is lower than this, I will remove it. In most cases, this is enough. If you're seeing that some of your um, lingering small value, small density values are being removed and you don't want that, put this to you know, 0 0.1 and it's going to be fine. If your emitter is clamping, if you have a fast moving emitter with a lot of velocity, let's say it's moving quite fast and it's clamping it you can increase the scale here and that will increase how much uh, padding you essentially get and you can play around with these two values and see whatever is going to work better for your case you can also change the iterations which will be even more precise on where to uh, expand the fields based on your velocity so if you're seeing anything clamping, play around with these values. Usually you don't have to increase it by a lot. You, in most cases, I just do this. I pull it to 12 and it's going to work in almost all the cases or increase the margin. So it's going to give you a bit more space to work with. Okay, so those are the fields. And let's go back to our VDB. So that's how it looks like. Uh, we kind of talked about this. This is where you can disable or enable what you're exporting. So right now we are not exporting anything. We can enable temperature and now we have temperature as well. Uh, let's output velocity. You can see by default velocity is set by half. So it's going to be uh, the solver itself will try to optimize your velocity. In most cases, you don't need full velocity. But if you're doing some motion vectors or you really need precise velocity values, then just put one to one. So that will export the full value. Mask field is set to density. So let's see what that will do. And also deactivate empty voxels, 16 bit, bit right to disk. It's just going to uh, compress your volumes. So the actual thing that you're caching is as optimized as it can be. All right, mask value. 
let's say you want you don't want density let's say you're just doing smokeless fire now in most cases we will look at fire in the next few episodes but in some cases you don't want any smoke you just want your fire just your temperature so you can say well i don't need density but now not nothing will be happening what you can do is you can go to settings uh, so yeah, under sparse you go to density you say density plus temperature now this will use temperature as well as the activation fields now still nothing will be happening or yeah so we are exporting temperature but it's all zero that is because our density is zero and on our output we have our mask field set to density set this to off or put it to temperature now we're going to have temperature being exported. We still don't see it because we need to visualize it. So let's put down a pyro bake volume and just visualize our fire, remove the smoke. And here's, here's just our temperature field. Now with this, you can then control your rate, put some disturbance, maybe too much disturbance, time scale. And we have a small little fire happening here. Now, this is nothing special yet, don't worry. Like, we will get to how the good fire looks. But this is the base of how you would start a fire. Let's uh, go back to our density and see what else do we have to cover. Solver, precision field. Uh, this is default to 32. I put it to default on 16-bit. It will just uh, optimize your files even more, and the, there is no difference in term. There is no visual difference, at least not that I can see. Let's put this back to density. So now we should have density again. So I put this to 16. Volume limit. It's how much it's gonna increase the volume if you hit your voxel target here sparse we covered compute just leave this alone but essentially it's going to say the number of megabytes the solver will leave for free other free devices is one gigabyte enable use nano vdb and then how many what's the my the max uh, sources shapes that we can use just leave this on uh, and this is also quite important so you need this otherwise the solver will start complaining uh, you can change your project line the uh, multi-grid but uh, there's also tips here so choose uh, v, v cycle is the most accurate but you can choose other ones uh, half a V cycle for instance uh, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to give a better performance so just i usually leave things to p cycle projection steps uh, is just how many steps you want this to perform sometimes you need to increase this uh, for better collision if your collisions are not working or you have issues maybe you have super fast collisions uh, try this try to increase the projection steps or the jacobi steps but that should be the last resort just usually it, this will uh, the default is going to be fine and the uh, enable advection like that just leave all of this can be uh, left to the default values okay so and like i said if you really want to go more in depth go to the documentation where we wrote everything down for you Okay, I hope this wasn't too boring. I was kind of rushing through it just so we can we can get it out of the way. Uh, uh, and let's um, let's get to some fun stuff now. <laughs>